Hello, oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hi, Linda here from ITTT, back with another live session this week. Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, first of all, if you can see me, if you can hear me, just drop a quick hi into um, the comment box. We are actually live on Facebook and we're also live on YouTube at the same time. So if you can see me, if you can hear me, please just let me know. And also let me know where you're watching from. Where are you at right now? I am in South Korea. It is 10 a.m. Friday morning. I'm super excited to be here again. So um, yeah, sometimes there are some technical difficulties. I had some issues, I think, last week. So um, there was no sound for some reason for, for a few seconds. So if that happens, just let me know and then I can repeat myself or I can fix, try and fix the issue. So that's why it's very important that you just give me a green light real quick, letting me know that everything's working well before we jump into the topic. Uh, yeah, cool, let me see, comments. Hello, Fetty from Algeria. Hi. Then we have Ajarn from Thailand. Perfect. Hi. Thanks so much for tuning in. That's great. I see there's quite a lot of people here. We have Hema from Plymouth. Hi. Oh, what time is it there right now? Isn't it like in the middle of the night where you are? <laughs> Thanks for watching, though. That's great that you're staying up for today's topic. Just a reminder, you can always come back and re-watch these sessions, you know, if you can't watch them um, in real time or you don't have that much time and then you can watch the rest later. We always keep them in our playlist on Facebook and also on YouTube. And I just recommend like checking out that playlist and just browsing it a little bit to see all the other topics that we talked about previously. We go live twice a week. One time I go live and then the other time my colleague Lisa, she goes live and she um, also talks about a lot of really cool topics about um, teaching English and lesson planning and a lot about um, what it's like teaching English as a non-native English speaker because she is from Russia and she taught English in China and she's teaching English online. So uh, a lot of good stuff on her side as well. I can see someone from Hong Kong. Hi. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we can talk about that um, in your in the QA session, or you can also message me um, on Instagram here at Linda Goes East. I'm always there for you to have a chat. Um, hi, Marcia in Chile. It's 9 p.m. Okay, great. Cool. That's not too bad. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so happy to be here and excited to talk about today's topic. Um, this was kind of a suggestion from someone um, who wanted to um, talk about more sort of like teaching tips and um, lesson planning side of things. So that's what we're going to do today. I picked this topic. And if you are already TEFL or TESOL certified, if you took a TEFL course, a TEFL course with ITTT, you have heard about this term before. Um, I hope you remember it. So maybe you can add some comments there. But um, yeah, this is just sort of maybe a refresher for people who took a TEFL course already and something new for people who are not yet um, TEFL certified. Hi, Juliana. Nice to see you again as well. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're OK. Yes, Hong Kong finished the course 120 hours. That's great. Cool. OK. <clears throat> Great. Um, just real quick, please don't forget to like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss any of our other live sessions um, and our other amazing content that we share every day. Check it out on our Facebook page. There's a lot of good materials for you to use in the classroom or something to learn about ESL, TEFL in general for yourself. Then we also have a 30% off discount code that we always share during our live sessions, only during our live sessions, very, very special. And what you can do is you can either scan the QR code up here, or I'm going to share a link in the comments, in the comment box, and then you can just um, copy that and you can apply. And, um, 
you can get 30% off. So it looks like this. <laughs> looks like this. This code ends with Facebook Live minus Linda. Um, and you get 30% off any Teflor TESOL course from ITTT. So if you are not yet certified or if you're certified and you're looking to, um, you know, add something to your portfolio, a specialized course, a TESOL diploma, something like that, um, you can definitely do that. <laughs> oh, well, maybe. Y'all, uh, you paid full price, no problem. Maybe you can um, use the 30% off to get an additional course, one of the 50 hour specializations, teaching English to young learners, teaching business English, teaching English online. You can get that 30% off, um, then it's, it's actually really, really cheap. <laughs> Maybe that's something you could do. All right. Also, if you are listening to this as a podcast episode, thank you so much for the download. You will also find the um, discount link in the podcast episode description. You can find it there. We always turn our live sessions into podcast episodes for just audio only. So if you're interested in podcasts, you can also find us um, on all major podcast platforms, really iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, you can find us. You can just type in Teffel and TESOL podcast by ITTT and it should show up there and then you can also find these episodes there if you prefer just listening to it. Um, yeah, that is about it. Like I said today, or as you can see, today's topic, ESA, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, Fares from Egypt. Oh, thank you so much for um, asking how I'm doing. I am doing good. Today I'm doing really, really good. Um, also, Marcia, thank you very much. Some of you might know I had some health issues. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it was at the beginning of the week. Monday and Tuesday, it was not so pleasant. Uh, also, Wednesday. Wednesday was pretty bad. And then, um, yeah. Thursday and today I'm doing well. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, great. So, oh, question here. Just curious, where is ITTT based? So we actually have offices all around the world. When you check out our, um, our website, you find all the different locations for our in-class centers. So really there's 30 plus um, locations where we're actually um, based. Um, yes, so you can pick and choose if you, especially if you want to do an in-class course, you can, um, do that. I work from home actually, so I don't work in an ITTT office. I work in my home office. So that's where I am in South Korea. Um, and I'm actually going to do a quick introduction about myself just real quick before we jump into it. Um, so you can, for people who are new here, who haven't seen me before, my name is Linda. I am uh, a travel writer and content creator on one side here under the name Linda Goes East. You can also find me on Instagram at Linda Goes East. Um, some of you have already reached out to me there and it's been really, really fun. Um, and I also have my own website at Lindagos or www.lindagos.com. And I'm originally from Germany and the US. My mom is German. My dad is American. And um, yeah, I've been based in South Korea for the past six years. I also taught English in China before I came to Korea and taught full time um, at a private English kindergarten in South Korea my first year here. And then I transitioned into Teflon and TESOL marketing for ITTT, but I still teach English on the side, different classes here and there. I've also started, I also start, uh, started teaching English online this year, uh, which has been really exciting. And I learned a lot of new things um, that also helps me, uh, you know, provide more value to you guys. So maybe I'll do a live about teaching online in the future, but actually my colleague Lisa, Lisa, excuse me, Lisa, I think she's actually so much better at that. She has a lot more experience about teaching English online. So I, I kind of want to leave it up to her, but maybe I'll do something in the future. Um, you can find ITTT or ITTT, first of all, stands for International TEFL and TESOL Training. You can find us at um, tefelcourse.net. And if you want to check us out on Instagram at International TEFL Training. And ITTT is a leading TEFL and TESOL course provider worldwide. 
Okay, that was a lot of talking. Let me just get one sip of my coffee real quick. All right, that's much better. <laughs> Great, so that's a little bit about myself. Now, moving on, uh, I wanna ask you guys a question. So have you heard about the ESA methodology of teaching before? Who has heard about it? You can just say yes. And if it's completely new to you, you can just say no in the comment section. So if you've heard about it, just type yes. If you have not heard about it, is it if it's new to you, just say no. So that I know what we're dealing with today. <laughs> so yes or no. Have you heard about ESA before? Have you heard about ESA before? Let me know. <laughs> okay, great. So Juliana says, yes, of course. I know you're already certified, so good that you also remember that. Tiana, hi. Yes, I'm in the middle of the course, 220 hour one. Great. Faris, also yes. Good. Yes. Great. Good. Good. I wonder if there's someone who has not heard about it yet. Um, don't be shy. Just let me know in the comments because this is what today's session is about. Also, is actually for someone who has not heard about it before. I will cover just the basics. Um, what ESA is, what it is used for, and also the different types of ESA. Leturg. Oh, Faris, yes. Leturg, yes. Feti, no. And Laura, no. Haven't heard about it. Okay, great. Good. So, a good mix. Some people heard, have heard about it because they already took a course. Some people have not heard about it yet. No problem, because that's what today's session is about today, basically. Okay, great. Um, good. Then, ESA methodology of teaching and why every teacher should use it okay marcia is not sure good maybe if i keep talking you remember it if you already took a course as well good okay so as you can see ES esa is a methodology of teaching and it's one of the newer ones actually and one that we also use in our tefl course um that we kind of use for our lesson planning sections as well because we just think it is really really helpful and um yeah why every teacher should use it basically <laughs> that's what i'm going to talk about next so first up yes as many of you already are typing in the comments i can see you there esa stands for engage study and activate so there are three phases in the ESA method of teaching. This method is really great for new and unexperienced teachers, but also experienced teachers alike, but especially for new and unexperienced teachers because they can just follow this structure, follow this model, and it kind of just gives you the opportunity to conduct your classroom in an organized and productive way. And it also keeps the students interested, motivated, and eager to learn more if done correctly. That's basically the aim of it and what it stands for, okay? ESA, engage, study, activate. So who came up with this methodology? I didn't come up with it. ITTT didn't come up with it. This guy came up with it, Jeremy Harmer. Jeremy Harmer is I checked it on his own website. He calls himself an ELT writer, presenter, teacher, and trainer. Um, he first proposed this theory, the ESA theory, in his book, How to Teach English from 1997. That's where it first appeared, the term. And then it quickly caught on. It became very, very popular and used pretty much all around the world for ESL, EFL teaching nowadays. Um, his personal experience, he taught... English um, as a foreign language extensively in both the UK and also in Mexico. And that's sort of where he got his experience and got inspired to develop this um, theory. And currently he is an online tutor for the MA TESOL at the New School in New York. 
And um, he has his own website. He also has a couple of videos on YouTube, um, some interviews. So if you're interested in learning more about Jeremy Harmer, you can Google him. You can check out his own website. I believe he also has um social media platforms you can even maybe reach out i found an email address where you can actually contact him um and yeah you can buy the book it's on amazon you can read it maybe that would be um quite interesting i actually haven't read it i should read it maybe i'll order it and i'll read it as well but yeah this is jeremy harmer who created this esa methodology so it's not a very old methodology 1997 um, and if you took a TEFL course with us, we also introduced other um, teaching methodologies in there that came before the modern ESA methodology. Um, and also basically the pros and the cons of each methodology. And Jeremy Harmer, he kind of took all of these previous methodologies and took all the benefits, all the pros out of them. Um, to create this uh, new ESA method that should be or is aimed at being the most beneficial for um, English as a foreign language. So there you go. Just a bit of background about ESA before we jump into it. So let's look at um, every phase in detail, what it means and what the purpose of this phase is and some examples of uh, activities you would do during that phase of um, studying or teaching. <laughs> Good. So first up, we have the engage phase. So that is the phase that you would start your lesson with, the engage phase. The aim of this phase is basically to get your students ready to participate in the lesson. That's the engage phase is the first basically contact you have with your students that day at the beginning of the lesson. So it also aims at getting your students talking and thinking in English, because if you teach English as a foreign language in a, another country, um they obviously don't use english in like they're outside of the classroom basically right in their free time or in their regular life normally um so it takes if you learn a foreign language you know this it kind of takes some time to just get into the other language um so the engage phase really just aims at kind of turning that switch on in your students' brains to, okay, now it's English time. So th start thinking and speaking in English. So that's the aim of the engage phase. Also, the aim can be to elicit the meaning of different words, vocabulary, or topics that you will cover in the lesson to sort of get them warm for what's about to be taught. And um, also, it's aimed at including all of the students in the activity. So in the engage phase, you should really engage all of the students, give all of them a chance to um, talk or just, yeah, turn that switch on for everybody, if that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so some possible activities that you can do in an engage phase, and there's so, so many more, obviously. Maybe some of you guys can name some other activities that you could do in an engage phase other than what I've listed here. But these are pretty common ones like showing pictures or even sometimes movies, for example, or magazine, magazines and pictures and stuff. So showing pictures and then ask them, hey, what do you see? What are the people doing in the picture and stuff like that? Um, then realia. What is realia? Just real life either objects or it could also be like um, a newspaper article, for example. Then we have contrasts. Um, this works especially well uh, if you're introducing like, uh, for example, adjectives or the topic of um, comparing. So like you could show a picture of two different people and then one short, one's tall. So they learn, oh, person A is shorter than or taller than person B and so on. So that works really well. You could also do miming and acting activities where either you or students mime and act out different things and the kids have to think and yell out what you're miming or acting. 
Um, or also just simply answering questions, for example, like, what's the weather like today? Look outside. What do you see? How's the weather? What does the sky look like? Just simple questions can also do it. Or like discoveries, class discussions of any sort. So discoveries like could be the news or anything, depending on what kind of class you teach. So like um, if you teach more, more like an English science class, you could, you know, pick some kind of recent discovery that was made and have like a, a discussion about that. Um, anything really. So if there's something um, that you feel also fits really well in the engage phase, let me know in the comments real quick before I move on to the next one. But this is the engage phase and the engage phase is so, so important. I think a lot of teachers um, tend to maybe just skip it and they go right to, okay, open your books, let's go down, let's study, you know. But the engage phase is so important um, and really makes a difference in your classroom and in your students. So you should never skip it, even if it's just five or ten minutes long. Um, it shouldn't be much longer than that. It depends, you know, how much time you have, how long your lesson is, how long your class time is. But um, even just five minutes or ten minutes of these activation things to turn the switch on really, really make a big, big difference. All right. Fitty, can we encourage students to ask questions to raise their curio curiosity about the topic as in reading tes texts? Uh, can we encourage students to ask questions? Yes, you can also, sure. You ask a question, have them ask questions back, ask questions to each other. Yeah, that's also really, really great. Oh, great example, the Turk, listening to music. Yes, that's also really, really great. Have them listen to music, maybe then describe, um, you know, what kind of feeling they get when they listen to that song, for example. Yeah, you could play a sad song, then they would say, oh, it makes me feel sad. Happy song makes me feel happy. If you teach emotions, that would work really, really well. That's a great example. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Does anybody have another good idea? Listening to music. I like that. That's really great. Ooh, that's a good point. Thank you, Tiana. So Tiana says the engage phase or engage is about getting the student talk time higher than the teacher talk time. Yes, that's a good point. So in the engage phase, you as a teacher don't want to be talking too much. You want to give the students the opportunity to, to talk more and think in English. And yes, that's a good point. Marcia says we can use graphic organizers at the beginning of the lesson too. Yes, that's good. Depend if especially if you teach like a business English class, I would imagine if you show some kind of graphics, graphs of, you know, like some kind of uh depending on what industry you teach, but like the change in, you know, some kind of spending or some kind of industry changes, totally that would work really really well. So, yeah. You can really adapt this, obviously, according, you would adapt this according to, you know, what uh, the aim of the lesson is, the level of your students, obviously, yes. Yes, we can use a spider map, yes. You can do like a, a brainstorming on the board, absolutely, absolutely. To work vocabulary too, yes, yes. Good, yes. Very, very good. Awesome, yeah, that's good stuff. Great. So that is the engage phase. And like I said, this is really very important. A lot of teachers tend to maybe skip the engage phase and go straight to book work or the study phase, which actually follows the engage phase. Um, and then the students just are kind of thrown into cold water. And that's what we're trying to avoid by having this engage phase to also just create this um, comfortable environment for the students that they feel safe and they feel uh, ready to speak in English and share their thoughts and experiences and you know in English. Great yeah good stuff thank you so much for adding your comments. Yeah Deanna also says having the students interact with each other that's also really great. Good okay awesome. So then after the engage phase we enter the study phase. Um, the aim of this phase is really pretty simple. You teach the students new words or new topics, new grammar, whatever the study 
point of this lesson is that's the study phase and you also show them the correct way of using them so this phase is all about you know um, correctness accuracy you want to focus on that um, errors also may be corrected and discussed in a tactful way and you also want to help the students come to a better understanding of each subject so that they can learn and move forward in the best way possible. So the study phase really is your uh, bookwork, your worksheets, your writing, whatever it is that this class is about, basically. And here are some examples of possible activities in the study phase. So this really depends on your school, on your lesson plan, on your curriculum, but it can be textbook, you know, bookwork, it could be dialogues, it could be gap fills, it could be reading and writing, it could be crosswords, any kind of worksheets, also grammar patterns, um, really anything. Um, and typically the study phase is longer than the engage phase also. Good. Then we have Tiana saying in the study phase is letting them do their work without interruption as much as possible. Right, right. But the first part should also be the teaching for sh so that they know what first. So, yeah, the study phase is basically you teach them either a new grammar point or the vocabulary and also how to use it correctly, the structure or whatever. And then they do the book work, the worksheets, and um, definitely feedback is also very important to feedback to make sure that they use it correctly. So yeah, that is the study phase. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any much more to add to this, um, but yeah, like I said, um, I think most teachers, they just really jump straight into the study phase because I remember at my school, it was like that. Um, when I taught in Korea, my first year I worked at the kindergarten at this English speaking kindergarten and we had a um, very strict curriculum. We had to, you know, complete, we, we knew exactly how many pages we had to do that day. So sometimes it was just not enough because it was, it's a kindergarten, so it's little kids. So it can be sometimes quite um, challenging to get all those pages done. So sometimes a lot of teachers would just skip the engage phase and would be like, okay, open your books. We need to get this done. And that's just not a really great way of teaching, especially any kind of student, really not especially children, but really any kind of student. Um, so that's why um, the engage phase is very important. And then after only after the engage phase, you go into the study phase and do your book work and your worksheets and um, the real teaching side of things. Good. Does anybody have one more comment, an additional comment about the study phase before we move to the activate phase? Um, also, if something's not clear for people who have never heard about the ESA method, let me know and I'll go, I'll explain a little bit more. But um, yeah, I think it makes, I hope it makes sense. Um, and obviously to me, because I've dealt with this methodology for a long time now, I know how it works. But um, if you know, it doesn't make sense to someone who has no idea about it. Please let me know. And then I'll, I'll um, elaborate a bit more. But really, I think the study phase, I don't know what else to say about it, really, than that. <laughs> it's just a study phase. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just waiting a couple more seconds because there is a delay. Um, so I don't want to move on too quickly, but yeah, just think about that a little bit more, um, also for yourself, you know, if you are a teacher, if you taught before, have you made that mistake? Did you just jump right into the study phase at the beginning of beginning of your lesson? Or do you actually have something like an engaged phase? Try and think, uh, maybe for yourself. Great. The Turk says word order arrangement is a nice activity in a study phase. Yes. I, so it's actually funny. I um, study Korean. I live in South Korea. So um, I study Korean and there's a test, a topic test, and actually also another test, the language test that I took before. <laughs> the exercise that I hated the most was the word order arrangement 
activity. Um, that I think that is the most difficult out of all of them. Um, because sometimes word, word order is fluid sometimes, you know, it depends on what you want to say, but obviously in the test, there's only one answer. So it's really challenging. I just remembered that that was just a side note that I hate those exercises, but they're so, so useful for sure. Yeah, Fiti says, how do we explain a grammar point? Yeah, so, um, you know, it depends on what grammar point. Um, yeah, it really depends on what grammar point you want to explain. So, um, can't really answer that right now. Would depend on what grammar point. But um, my colleague Lisa, she actually had a live session about really her recommended textbook, textbooks and grammar um, books for teaching English. Um, so maybe you should check that out and then you can use those books and then kind of um, explain it using those books. I think that'd be a good um, way of doing it. Marcia says we base our work on Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Tana says, during my course, which I'm still in, they said writing isn't as important as other things. I would add my writing activities. Yeah, well, you know, it depends on what kind of class you teach. Sometimes you teach a writing class. So then <laughs> writing is important. It's not, some schools, they don't only have like general English classes. Some schools have very specific um, classes. So they have a writing class, they have a reading class, they have a translation class, they have, you know, what what have you. So, um, but that's the beauty of ESA, that you can really adapt it to any subject, any topic. Um, and just if you, what, I, what the purpose of this uh, live session is just to follow this structure. First, have an engage, then have a study, and then have the next phase that we're going to talk about. And if you follow this structure, it's just going to be a lot easier for you as a teacher, especially as a new teacher, to plan your lessons and kind of follow it. And especially also time-wise, I remember when I was first teaching, you have kind of no sense of time. So um, what this method gives you is sort of like also being able to map it out time wise. So you would, okay, I have 10 minutes for my engage phase and then 30 minutes for my study phase and then another 10 minutes for my activate phase, the last phase. I'm just going to talk about it in a minute. Um, and then it kind of helps you just keep track of things. Whereas if you're just like thrown in there without any plan, without any structure, you're kind of probably struggling. You don't really know, oh, you know, how much time things take. And then maybe you, you, you think you're in a hurry, you complete all your 10 pages of work that you need to do that day. And then you still have 20 minutes left and you don't know what to do. So that's kind of, kind of something that we're, we're trying to avoid with this ESA methodology, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Good. So I just already talked about it. Lastly, the last phase of the ESA method is the activate phase. The aim of this phase is to have the students or the students put to work the things that they learned in the study phase. Um, and it also helps the teacher to know if the students understood the material that was discussed in the class. So if it's a grammar point, um, the study phase, you teach them the grammar, maybe you do some board work together, fill in the gap, you know, with, for example, simple past, go, went, uh, do, did, and so on. And then the activate phase, the students really need to do everything by themselves. And you kind of observe and you can see if they understood it or if they didn't understand. So yeah, that's the activate phase. And so what kind of activities can we do during the activate phase? Really so many different things. Those are really just a handful of things that you could do here that I mentioned. So class discussions would be great. Role plays are also really, really good story building um you know especially with if it's a if you teach grammar and then if you have a story in the present tense oh put it in the past tense or things like that um posters adverts very popular 
Um, especially if you talk about, you know, if you have new vocabulary. I remember doing a lot of posters about like environment, global warming, environment, things like that. Posters are great for that. Um, simulations, any kind of simulations, debates also. I, I taught a debate class before, it was super fun. Um, and really any kind of projects are really, really great. Any kind of projects. Um, and any kind of like activate game, lots of games are really fun. So the activate phase is really flexible and um, you can really do a lot. But the aim of the activate phase is just to use that what you learned during the study phase and then put it into practice for the students and as the teacher to observe and make sure that they understood. If they didn't understand, I would not interrupt the activate phase unless it's a super duper big error that like everybody makes and you're like, oh, they didn't really understand what I was saying. Then maybe like, okay, stop guys, let's take a moment. And then you would explain it again maybe. But if it's just a little thing like here and there, what you would do is maybe you would write it down. And then at the end of the class, the last couple of minutes, you can be like, OK, I noticed these mistakes. Or you write down like the three biggest mistakes on the board. Guys, you made these mistakes. Can you spot the mistake? What did we say is correct? And then maybe just, hey, write these sentences at home three times um, because you got them wrong. Something like that. And then you have it. You have a successful class that flows, that makes sense, that you can also pace, that you have control over. Because I think a lot of t new teachers are not good at that, especially the pacing, the time, and then also just kind of taking control of the class. That's really important. You lead the class, you have it in your hands, and it also has to flow. And I think that's why the ESA methodology is just so great and makes so much sense. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna look at the comments. Uh, Marcia says, yeah, you are right, Linda. When, you, when we are new at teaching, one of the most difficult things is to manage pacing. Yeah, definitely, I remember that. And I think also even as an experience, well, I mean, it gets better with experience, but especially if you have new students, um, it can happen all the time because you don't know the students yet. You don't know if they quick, if they work quickly, if they are slow, you don't really know. So it can happen all the time and it just takes a few uh, lessons, you know, until you're really in it, especially if new students. Marcia also says, so I can see that the activate phase is the moment that we in our country call the evaluation time. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Evaluation time sounds like more like testing to me, kind of, if you have a test. But yeah, okay. The moment when you can make students to apply the content of the lesson. Yes, exactly. That is the activate phase. And then Mercia says, thank God I'm doing all these phases. I'm so glad to know that. Yes, good job. That's why I was saying, ask yourself if you are teaching, if you're already teaching, if you are really doing all of these phases, especially the engage phase, I think that's the most important one. Then we have Chantal. Hi there. I've taught English as a second language to Japanese students using the ESA method, and it definitely works. Awesome. Yes, I think so too. I really also like using the ESA method. It's just really uh, safe, bulletproof. This method really works. And um, especially, like I said, as a new teacher, it just kind of gives you something to follow um, and something to think about. So yeah, awesome. Okay. Then just recapping real quick. So this, what we just talked about, ESA is called a straight arrow ESA lesson. If you already took a TEFL course, you know that there are different types of ESA lessons. So you can actually kind of mix and match a little bit. But this one is called straight arrow because it goes from E to S to A. Engage first, then study, and then activate. That's the base basic form of ESA. Now there's other types as well that I just want to show you guys real quick. And the first one here is the boomerang ESA lesson. Boomerang, because as you can see, we have two activate phases. So first an engage, then an activate, then a study, and then an activate two. And this is called a boomerang. So you would engage, 
do an engage activity. Then you go straight into an activate. Depending on what kind of lesson you have, or if it's something that the students kind of already know or should know, you can go straight into an activate and then make and then see, oh, if they understood that or not. If they didn't understand, if there are some mistakes made, you then go into the study phase. Or if this is like a review, for example, you would do an engage. You then go into an activate for, I, I like to teach grammar, so I always use grammar examples. But for example, the present perfect, for example, you do an activate for present perfect, which they already learned in like a previous lesson. And then you do a study for a present perfect progressive tense because they're connected. So it kind of makes sense, right? And then you do an activate two for present perfect prog progressive for example. <laughs> Great. It is a review session. Yes, it can definitely be used as a review. Or like my example, like building on existing knowledge, for example. Feti asks, can we say that activate one is discovering phase? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. In my example, what I said with present perfect, uh, and then present perfect progressive. Yes, for sure. Kind of like a discovery phase. Yeah, absolutely. So this is called the boomerang ESA. And then there is another one. Bonus points for someone in the comments who can let me know which other type of ESA lesson there is. Because I know a lot of you have already taken the course. So you should know this. Let me just wait a few seconds. <laughs> mm. And I'm going to answer Feti's question. And activate two is explaining. No. So activate two is still activate. So in my example, what I was saying, for example, you taught in a previous lesson, you taught the present perfect. I've done my homework. Or I've been to France three times, for example. This tense is called present perfect. You taught that in a previous lesson. This lesson today, you use the boomerang ESA lesson because you're going to teach the present perfect progressive or continuous. For example, I have been living here for three years with Ingform. So you could do an engage. Um, you know, you could show a picture or you could uh, any, any kind of engage activity to elicit, uh, again, the present perfect, for example. Then you do an activate to activate, reactivate, if you if you will, the present perfect, some kind of activity. And then you go into the study phase and you teach them the present perfect continuous, which is similar, but something new. And then you do an activate two, where you only do the present perfect continuous, or you do present perfect plus continuous. So, Activate two is not explaining. The study phase is explaining. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Let me know if that makes sense. Um, good. And then, yes, I asked if somebody remembers what the other type of ESA lesson is. And Juliana said patchwork. Yes. Good job. Patchwork. Yes. The next type that I'm covering is the patchwork ESA lesson. And look how many steps there are. <laughs> so patchwork uh, is really mix and match. You as a teacher, you can do whatever you want to do, but you make sure you always start with an engage, right? Always start with en engage. And so, for example, this patchwork is engage, activate one, study one, activate two, activate three, study two, activate four. So whatever... I feel like patchwork, you know, the more experience you have with just straight arrow ESA and then maybe doing a boomerang at some point, what happens is if you always do the straight arrow ESA here, engage, study, activate, especially for more advanced students, it just becomes predictable and predictable becomes boring. They all, if you always use this for especially advanced students, 
they're going to know, okay, first we're going to do engage, then we're going to do study, oh, and then we're going to do a role play or whatever. It kind of defeats the purpose because it gets boring. So then what you will do after a while, once you also become more popular and more, more confident um, with your teaching, you can then do the patchwork style and just mix and match uh, different activities, different phases and stages to then also uh, make it more interesting, more fun, less predictable for your students. And that um, really gets your class going as well. So this is not a fixed structure of patchwork. Patchwork really can be anything, starting with an engage and ending with an activate. And all the phases that come in between here, all of these are up to you basically. But it should always start with an engage and always start with an activate. So this one, you're very flexible and you can do whatever you want. Also depends on you know how long your lesson is. You might not have these seven steps. Um, but if you teach like a whole workshop or something, then you have more time and you can definitely do all of these steps and more, more activities here and there and more activates and all of that. And Juliana says, it is my favorite one. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I do think it takes some time, especially like if you're really new to teaching, um, this is probably a little bit overwhelming for you. So you do want to start with straight arrow first and then maybe try out the boomerang and then later when you're more confident and more um you know have more teaching skills then you can do the patchwork model for example so yeah and you're gonna learn a lot more about esa and about the different types that i mentioned here so the boomerang and the patchwork this is all explained in much more detail in a tefl course and so if that kind of piqued your interest if that got you um interested in the in esa and to learn more about it please uh take advantage of this offer 30 percent off and just sign up for a TEFL course and you're gonna learn a lot more about that in there. A lot more detail, a lot more examples, also lesson plans that you can download, straight arrow lesson plans, patchwork lesson plans, boomerang lesson plans, all of that you can download it if you take a TEFL or TESOL course. So if you're not yet certified, um, take advantage of that. Also, we have specialized courses um, if you did not know, those are 50-hour courses, um, teaching English to young learners, teaching business English, teaching English online. We also have bundles where it includes the basic 120-hour course plus different specializations. There's also a TESOL diploma course, depending on how far you want to go in this teaching journey of yours. So I hope you enjoyed today's live session. And I just want to mention one more time how to find ITTT. So our website is teflacourse.net and here you can see our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, so do check that out. And yeah, back to Q&A now. You can scan this code or I'm just gonna share the link one more time in the comment section for anyone who may have tuned in late and didn't see it in the beginning. It looks like this. You can just click on this link. It leads you straight to the application page. You can fill out your application and then complete your payment later. You don't have to pay right away. Um, you can do that whenever you are ready. Just know that this 30% code is there for you and you can use it. All righty. Well, that was my take on ESA today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. Um, if you have any questions about it, um, you can ask right now, or you can just message me also here on Instagram and you can reach out to ITTT. Um, oh, and actually I also wanted to share that. We have some videos also about ESA. If you're more interested, you can check them out. We have a whole playlist on YouTube. Actually, if you're on YouTube right now, you can find it. I think it's called ESA Methodology. Um, and I'm also here on our website. This is the first video of the playlist. So you can click on that. You can check it out if, you're, if you want to 
find out more details about ESA, something that I did not mention in the live session, but yeah. Cool, and Leturk says, I've just heard the patchwork ESA lesson. Cool, I enjoy your live session today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming back here week after week. I remember uh, seeing you here quite a lot. So thank you so much. Also, Juliana, thank you so much for always being here. I really, really appreciate that. I hope you guys learned something fun. And yeah, now is um, we still have some time for Q&A. So if you have any other questions, not about ESA or about ESA or just TEFL, TESOL, teaching abroad in general, teaching English online, now is your time. I'm still going to be online for a couple more minutes. So if you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask right now. And I'm just keeping an eye here on the comments. Uh, Marcia says, <clears throat> thank you, Linda. I want to watch the videos because nowadays I'm getting ready for my teaching evaluation. Great, cool, yeah. I hope you'll find something you can use. And Forrest says, thank you a lot. Yeah, thank you for staying all the way until the end. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Marcia says, our Ministry of Education evaluates us every four years. Oh, wow. Good. Good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> I think you're going to do just fine. You seem like a really good teacher, so. Okay. Yal says, thank you, Linda. I will watch this session later. Yeah. It's actually not a live session, the link that I just shared. <clears throat> it's, I don't know, it's a, I don't know how long the video is. Um, it's not that long, but yeah, there are different parts, so it might take a while. Good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're very welcome. All right, let me just take more sips of my coffee while you maybe think of a question. I don't want to sign off too early, not giving people um, the opportunity. Mm hmm Fitzy says, thank you. It was interesting. I'm glad. I'm glad it was interesting. I had fun too. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said before, we always keep our live sessions in our playlists. So um, you can go back to the playlist. We have so many different topics. Um, it's getting kind of difficult to think of new topics every week. So if you have any any topic suggestions, anything that you want me to talk about in the future, let me know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would appreciate some help. <laughs> oh, God. Matt says, I tuned in late. Thank you, Linda. I've never heard of ESA before now. Wow, cool. Okay. Glad I could teach you something new. <laughs> you can always watch the replay from the beginning. Maybe you have missed some important parts in the beginning, but um, yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, good question. Y'all says, for non-native speakers, is it hard to be an ESL teacher? I would say it's not hard. Um, you can definitely be an ESL teacher even if you are a non-native English speaker. There's actually so many benefits to that because you learned English um, from scratch like your future students. So you can actually um, really really feel for them and you understand how it's like learning English. So I think that's a huge, huge benefit that a lot of native speakers just don't have. Um, my, like I mentioned at the beginning, I don't know if you've heard that y'all, but my colleague Lisa, she's a non-native English speaking teacher <laughs> from Russia. And she taught English in China and she's now back in Russia and she's teaching English online most of the time. But, um, you should check out her live sessions. She has so many tips for non-native speakers to become ESL teachers. So um, she has like tips on, you know, what books to use, where to look for students, also how to, which courses to take for, for your personal, prof uh, for your professional development um, and what kind of English uh, certifications you should get to increase your, you know, portfolio and also the places where you can teach abroad as a non-native speaker so yeah don't freak out there's so many places where you can go and where um non-native speakers are really appreciated as well i think non-native english teachers are sometimes even better <laughs> actually 
because they know how English works a lot better and usually understand grammar a lot better. Um, and that also goes for anyone if it's a native speaker and they can speak other foreign languages, it's the same. You, I think any teacher who is a language teacher who also speaks and has learned a foreign language is a better teacher. Maybe that's not your opinion, but that's my opinion. <laughs> that's just me. Um, because you understand what la how language learning works and how hard it is and, you know, so that's what I think. <laughs> All right, cool. Good. Then if there are no more questions, um, I'm ready to sign off very soon. Um, yeah, what else? Don't forget to like and subscribe. I just want to say that one more time because we do go live every week. You don't want to miss it me and my colleague lisa like i said she's awesome don't miss her live sessions either don't forget the 30 percent off you can find the link in the comments and if you have any topic suggestions you can message me here at linda goes east um on instagram it would be great also on facebook i have a facebook page also called linda goes east you can check that out as well if you want uh message me i would appreciate it if you have any other questions that you don't want to share in the comments publicly, um, you can just ask me privately in a message as well. And then, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. I hope to see you all again next week. I'll be here. I hope you'll be here as well. And then I think I'm ready to go. I hope you're going to have a lovely, lovely weekend uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Stay safe. And until next time, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm signing off. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. See you next time. Bye.